They say we are a different breed from regular people, but that's not entirely true. We may go a little quicker, but we still go through life like everybody else. You have good days, and you have bad days. It is Richard Petty. And one era always gives way to the next. The King Richard Petty will say goodbye, and there aren't many dry eyes down here. When we were racing, the respect was real. But so was rivalries, especially this one. It's not like IndyCar and NASCAR have never crossed paths before. Mario Andretti has won the 1967 Daytona 500. We just done it in our own ways. There goes John Andretti, the 48-year-old. He's not driving like a guy that's the last race. But we've never seen it like this. Reports coming out of Indianapolis that for the first time ever, NASCAR and IndyCar will be seen on the same weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The best of both series together. At this place above all others, on our nation's birthday. I'm not sure I could have ever imagined it. You or me both. But that's another thing about racing and life. The turn you don't expect to take can get you to where you want to be. right here in Big Lane. Such a tremendous bill, and this is just such a great place. Dale Jarrett wins the Brickyard 400 for the second time. Nothing could stop the Jarrett juggernaut today. And then some guy whose poster hangs here proudly, 96 and 99 chant, started that whole kiss in the bricks thing in 96. You know, it's one thing to have success at Indy. It's another level to start a tradition at Indy. Did it really just come to you at that moment, or had you thought about it for a while? No, we'd actually, my crew chief, Todd Perry, and I had talked about it. We might have been uh, a little bit thinking that we were maybe good that year and <laughs> that we had a chance. Uh, so we talked about just doing something different. And I'd actually, we were in Victory Lane enjoying all the celebration. I'm looking around at everything taking place. And Todd was like, hey, remember what we talked about? And so that's when we led everybody out to the Yard of Bricks. And uh, we, so we had this idea and, and said, hey, we're going to do something different, having no idea that it would become a tradition here. So when you see it happen in the Indy 500, that's going to make you feel pretty cool. Oh, really good. So I mean, awesome. it brings back great memories, sure. obviously, but to know that everybody has called yeah. and they think that it's so special, too. Real secret from me. I got a drive around Indy from Mario Andretti last year, and he took me over, and I got a picture of me kissing the bricks at Mario. Oh, nice. So thank you, man. Perfect. You, you got me one of my great memories in sports. <laughs> well this is Watch With. Bubba, I know you're a huge road course fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice part is we drew the pole, so I'm thinking our luck may be changing. <laughs> Rigged. Thank you, uh, oh, cycle in. Nice fan you've got there. The judge is right over here. How's, how's my cooking been? Good. See? You heard it right here. Joey was the reason I knew I had no chance at m moving up over there. Sliced bread was coming in. <laughs> it worked out for both of us okay. Not there. That's the line. That's the line so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, the world's one big Zoom call, right? And Kyle Petty got to do with some NASCAR drivers watching the IndyCar race on NBC yesterday. And it's going to be happening this afternoon in reverse. Colton Herter, Joseph Newgarden, Alexander Rossi and Simon Pagino, the reigning Indianapolis 500 winner, will be watching. It's one of those places that gives you goosebumps. The history just oozes out of that place. As soon as you pull in there, you feel a part of it. They will have the opportunity of a lifetime where the greatest race car drivers have won. Seeing your car on the grid when you walk up to race, you can't help but have this special feeling. It's all about winning that race. You want to kiss the brick. There's not many people that get to say that they actually lived out their childhood dream. I feel like I'm in a dream from when I was 10 years old. It's probably the biggest win of my career so far. This is your house, KB. Your house. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were 
were so gallantly streaming And the rockets rake like bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star spangled banner and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave drivers of the big machine hand sanitizer 400 Start your engines! First time at speed going into turn number one here at Indy. They stay side by side for the lead. Logano inching ahead of Kurt Busch as they go down the back stretch. Looking at outside line, work for Joey Logano. Use that momentum. Look at Brad Keselowski. Big aggressive move down the back straightaway. Short shoot into turn four. They're still side by side fighting for position. Keselowski and the two on the inside of the 10 of Eric Almarola. See them side by side. That's going to be a big advantage to that car behind them. ECU app error. The bottom left it says ECU bios error. Look at this. The chaos back here. Corey LaJoy in the 32. He's in it. The 19. Martin Trux Jr. because of the issues he had on the track. He's involved in this as well. They pile up at the entrance to pit road. Those things are 70 pounds that just got thrown in the air there. Great to see a smile on his face. So a thumbs up and a smile. Again, that crew member for the 12 team. Those guys are warriors. Go over the pit wall. What kind of man? Think about the nerve of that guy smiling after that. Wow. Now we're going to show you another look, uh, but again, Steve mentioned 3,500-pound car. Oh. Mm. Pinched between two of them. And the amazing thing is he, he crawled out of there and was getting out of the way. The helmet had come off, but, uh, yeah, these guys really extremely brave. Here's this, they start coming on pit road, and they just all got stacked up right there. One of them, one car, one driver had to slow up because of a guy turning into his pits, and then they just all stacked up. And this is the narrowest pit road on the series. Yeah, 24 feet, and you know cars on the on their in their pit boxes taking up the majority of that, or some of that. And when a car does get slowed down, on you know it's a chain reaction, a domino effect that starts way up here, and then look at the cars. There's nowhere for these guys to go because of how narrow that pit road is. And Four car on the outside with a teammate behind him. Contact three wide. Brad Kozolowski to the inside. Puts Bowman three wide in the sandwich. We saw Bowman slide out, make a little contact there. And Logano trying to steal away the lead for Kevin Harvick. Oh, we got a car in the fence. The six of Newman. Big smoking car for Ryan Newman as a lot of damage to the right side of that car. And the caution has come out once again. He's running 18th. And we talked about He had a vibration. I told Mr. H and, and I told uh, Jimmy as well, you know, I just how honored I was to, to be this part that they that they would ask me to be in this this role. And um, it means a lot. It means a lot as a driver. It means a lot um, just to everybody involved in my family. And um, hopefully I get the opportunity again. Oh, look ahead. Coming up Chase on two Elliott. laps to go, and look at how important points are. Chase look at the fight here. Pushes that three-car Dylan down the front straightaway. Off into turn one. 
trying to clear the four of Harvick. That's a big deal for Chase. That could, you know, that could be a race winning move right there. I know it's early, but. Oh, neck at the top of pit road. You live this for Indy 500 a week. We talk about it every year. This narrow pit road, it got the NASCAR guys as well again. It's a very tight pit road, especially coming off a track like Pocono. And a lot of times you think you're dry, as a driver, your heart rate's going to be highest on the racetrack. Sometimes it's actually higher in pit lane because of all the all the dangers there. There's exposed personnel. I've seen a lot of Indy 500s lost in pit lane. And unfortunately for some of these guys, their Brickyard 400 host went out of pit lane too. Is it cool for you to be here to watch the NASCAR Cup guys on the on the fame two and a half mile oval? Absolutely love it. And if the end of that stage one is anything like the end of the race is going to be. This is going to be a good finish. That's good. I was giving Hinch some grief because we're wearing suits. He's wearing a T-shirt. He said, yeah, I was a heck of a lot hotter in the car yesterday exactly. when he finished 11th in the Grand Prix. That push. Matty Benedetto's giving Chase Elliott. He's going to let him clear Harvick. A little bobble there. Oh, boy. Oh, Such wow. a nasty, nasty angle into turn three. One of the fastest parts of the racetrack for these guys. And, you know, it's just, there's no practice. It's a green racetrack. It's incredibly abrasive. We've seen this track just destroy tires throughout a tire test. These tires, even this far into the race, are still not able to go through an entire run. Oh. He's got a left front tire issue. Blew up. The left front tire blows up on the 24. Remember, just took the right sides. Two tires only on the last pit stop. That left front had time on it. I don't know if you ran yeah, over something. Left front came apart. Yeah, he might have oh. kind of slide, might have slid that left front into the pit stall or something. Great point, Dale. Great point. I didn't see the pit stall, but that would be what you would expect, right? Damage it right away. It explodes. You see the disappointment out of Chad Canal. Here comes the push from Harvick. Harvick's going to go up. three wide. Harvick oh, almost into the, the lead. Grass. <laughs> All the way to the bottom of the racetrack, and Harvick takes the lead at Indy. And I thought he was going to push him. I flinched. You have to take I, those runs. You have to take every run you get, especially against Denny Hamlin, who looks like he has the oh, best car. Ryan Blaney, Blaney hard into the wall. Oh, my goodness. Blaney was running 12th. We saw he got damaged on pit road earlier. All right, 95 is going to line up, push this 11. They're side by side up front. The 11 is going to have the run. He's going to try it. Here comes Hamlin to the inside. And Hamlin will make the pass. Oh, yeah, that's a right quarter panel. Look at that move by Harvick. Ah, oh, that's aggressive. Oh, oh, oh hard into the wall. Denny Hamlin from the lead slams into the wall. Again, we see a right side, right front failure. And Hamlin hard into the wall. Catch your breath. Get your breath, but they're they're with you now. We mentioned it with Eric Jones slammed into the wall, one of the hardest hits. And then we see it duplicated by Denny Hamlin there. Great to see him climb out of the car. Not only the, the physical pain of hitting the wall like that, but the emotional pain knowing so close to winning Brickyard 400. He said in 2017 it was biggest heartbreak of his career to lose that race he came so close to winning it that day he's got to be feeling that same heartbreak Chris Gapehart the crew chief let's take another look off into turn one and the right front goes Seen some big impact impacts today That's such a big hit it's so Surprising to me too because we, we've just been talking about it for the last several laps about the clean air that he's enjoyed and well, One thing you wonder junior is 
you know, with the cooler temperatures, right? It's gotten more speed. Yeah, it's just gotten. It's probably faster than it was. Clean air, just carrying so much speed. You just wonder if that, you know, that this, extra extra pressure on the tires. And you you have to acknowledge that his teammate Jones had an issue. Yep. The 18, Kyle Busch talked about having a vibration just before Jones had his accident. I really wish we could show you what this racetrack surface looks like and how those grooves are cut into it. They kind of run parallel with the race car. They're very sharp. More time around. Kevin Harvick. A huge lead over Matt Kenseth. Down the back stretch for the final time. Harvick, Denny Hamlin, they've been the dominant two cars all of 2020. Hamlin crashes out as they were battling for the lead. Now Harvick trying to go back to back at the most fam famous racetrack in the world. Coming out of turn four. Kevin Harvick is going to see the checkered flag. He wins again at the Brickyard. It's Brickyard 400. Awesome job. Big red behind him. Boy, I tell you, what a battle with Denny Hamlin. Had he not had his issue, did you think he'd maybe catch him? Well, we knew he had, he had some, he was going to be really close on tires. And um, Rodney told me on the radio, he said, just make sure you keep the pressure on him. And that was... All the pressure I could give. So, uh, you know, those guys do a really good job. Just got to thank everybody on my Bushlight Ford Mustang, everybody from Mobile One, uh, Haas Automation, uh, Hum Brothers Pizza, Jimmy John's, everybody who uh, is a part of this program and just keeps bringing good race cars to the racetrack. From the beginning, this was a battle of track position. How tough was that battle to try and stay out front? You made one daring move, Kevin, where you went almost to the grass to go get the lead. Yeah, I didn't have any more. I didn't have any more room. <laughs> that was for sure. Uh, but it's a brickyard, man. This is this is uh, what I grew up wanting to do as a kid. Went at the brickyard, and to be able to come here and and uh, you know have won for the third time is is something that I, I could have never dreamed of. I want to say hi to my family at home. Uh, I know Keelan will be jacked up. Uh, Piper's probably asleep. If not, hello. Um, but just uh, really, really proud of all these guys on this team. He joins Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch as the only driver to win back-to-back -back Brickyard 400s. Kevin Harvick wins it for a third time. Yeah, just, uh, it's tough. I, I hate it for the FedEx team. And just, uh, yeah, we did, did what we needed to do. It just uh, didn't work out for us today. And um, had a fast car, obviously. And was, was stretching out there, but uh, wasn't pushing uh, right front at all. Just, you know, it's kind of roulette. You know, you've, whether you get one that's going to stay together or not, and mine didn't, and you saw the end result. So that, that stinks, but probably the whole uh, FedEx, you know, Toyota team, we've just uh, been so good here lately, and I hate that, you know, I feel like I'm doing all I can. I just, you know, these these big races and just a lot of things like this just don't, don't go my way all the time. And, uh, you know, but we're still going to, Go next week and try to win the next one. So we'll do all we can. Just like team owner Tony Stewart did when he won the Brickyard 400, the Ford team, Kevin Harvick and his crew climbing the fence, even though it's to an empty grandstand here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This week. Yeah, we see Cole Custer with a, with a great run today. He really needed that. I think he's a guy that leans on his confidence, and that's going to give him more. Michael McDowell carrying the torch for front row, finishing seventh. Tyler Reddick, another rookie, continuing a great run. Bubba Wallace in ninth. <laughs> Rick, the racetrack. What yes. a weekend of racing. Yes. IndyCar, Xfinity Cup. This is my kind of holiday weekend. Yeah, Roger Penske and everybody with the IndyCar series and Indianapolis Motor Speedway.